What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's me, Emily, and today I'm getting into another video that is related to music. You guys know I've posted a bunch of music content over the past year or so that I've had this channel, and I want to keep making more videos like that because one, you guys seem to be really interested in music and my music taste and Christian music, and it's also just a really helpful topic that I'm talking about today. So. If you didn't read the title already, today I'm going to be showing you guys some ways to stop listening to secular music. But before I get into those ways, I'm going to kind of share with you guys my journey with secular versus Christian versus other types of music and um, how I stopped listening to that, why I stopped listening to other types of music, and just some other tidbits and advice along the way. So this is going to be a good video. You can grab a snack, get comfy, take notes, whatever you want, and I'm just going to get into it. First of all, let's define what secular music is. So if you don't know, secular music is basically music that is not religious, to give you the dictionary definition. But like basically how I look at it, secular music is just music that doesn't honor God, doesn't really mention God, doesn't really glorify God, doesn't really have any connection to the word of God or a godly lifestyle. That is what I would consider secular music. Backtracking to start with my journey with secular music, I got saved, saved-ish, when I was in about seventh grade. I want to say the beginning of my seventh grade year. And I listened to all types of music. I was so lost when it came to like modesty, when it came to music, that I literally, like I was going to church and I was starting youth group and I had in my Instagram bio, God first at the top. And then right under that, I had boss A, B. And I just think it was so funny. And one of my friends called me out once and was like, why do you have, like, why is that in your bio? That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't add up at all. And, and I was like, I was so offended. But then I, I eventually had my eyes open to realize, like, you can't serve two masters. Just like the Bible says, you can't serve two masters because you'll love one and you'll hate the other. And it's the same way with music. You can't necessarily and I know that this is kind of like a gray area a gray topic hairy topic um and there are definitely some things that are black and white and some things that are more like this for most music that is secular or worldly you can't love that music and also love God like you can't serve that music by listening to it and loving the artists and knowing everything they're doing with their lives and then also serve God and say you love God and, and all that stuff. It just it just doesn't add up, just like my Instagram bio. <laughs> I slowly, slowly, slowly started to understand the whole you can't serve two masters thing, you can't be lukewarm. At this time in my life, I had a Kindle. I had a phone in seventh grade, but it was like a flip phone. It went up like this. So it was not a real phone. It really wasn't all that. <laughs> so and I couldn't listen to music on it I cannot listen to real music but I did have a Kindle because I was a huge bookworm um, and so on my Kindle I could download all kinds of apps and I found like this free music app and I used it so I was using that I listened to music all the time I always 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 loved music then one day I had this error message on my Kindle that said like you, your Kindle won't, it wouldn't start, like it wouldn't turn on, like it would turn on, but it wouldn't like open to all the apps and stuff. And I looked up online, I think on my mom's phone and I checked like, how do you fix this problem on a Kindle? And basically the answer was you have to restart it, but all of your information is going to be deleted. So I was really upset because I had so much music on there and I was just, you know, all my stuff and I was really upset, but I tried it anyway and all, everything on my Kindle ended up being erased. And I was kind of sad, but I was also like, you know what, maybe this is a good time for a fresh start, like whatever. Caleb was having this one month challenge for listening to all Christian music, only Christian music for a month. And so I tried it and I was just like, okay, well, since I have none of my music anyway, let's just start off brand new, only Christian music for a month, see what happens. And from that month, it was a February in seventh grade, I never went back to solely listening to worldly music. Obviously, I've heard secular songs, I've listened to secular songs. I'm not gonna lie and say that I haven't, but from that moment, I made a decision that this is the kind of music that I'm gonna listen to. Um, in the vast majority, like 95% of the music that I listen to. I also remember this one time, sorry, I'm telling like a lot of little stories, but um, 
I was at church and I think we had like a cleaning the church day. We would clean the church and we'd go like ice skating or we'd go out to like lunch or something afterwards. And one of my friends at that time, he was listening to Lecrae and I had no clue about Christian mu- or Christian rap music. So I told him, I was like, I'm on an all like one month Christian music. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to listen to that. He was like playing out of his phone and like him and like a bunch of other people, they were like laughing at me and I was like, what like I don't want to listen to rap music right now and they were like oh this is Lecrae he's a Christian rap artist and that began (laughs) the journey of me finding Christian music loving Christian music and my taste has significantly improved over time if you need any reasons why you should stop listening to secular music or you've been feeling like a tugging on your heart to stop or when you listen to secular music you feel a conviction like you feel this is wrong you feel like it's something you need to hide you feel like god isn't pleased with you then i am going to give you some reasons why you should stop listening to it so if you guys don't know lucifer or the devil or the enemy of your soul was an angel of music but when he was in heaven before he fell like lightning (laughs) sorry i just wanted to add that before satan fell from heaven he was the angel that was in charge of worship. He was in charge of music. And if you go into the Bible and you read, you'll see that. And the thing that I I love that I've heard before is that the enemy uses the same old tricks, the same old schemes. The same things that people struggle with in the Bible are the same things people struggle with now. Satan was the angel of music in heaven. And I'm telling you, he is the prince or the angel or the, he's the god of music on this earth. If you hear some of the music, see some of the music videos, the darkness that is in the industry, the music industry today, and you really looked into it and you really like, like looked at it from an outside perspective, oh my goodness, you would be shocked. There is so much wickedness in the music industry, so much evil that is hidden in in these music messages. And there's, there's a, a, a perversion, there's idolatry, there's disgusting love for money, and there's lust, and there's so many disgusting things in the music that we so casually listen to and blast out of our stereos that I really think this generation needs to wake up. Sin is always pleasurable for a season. All of these artists that you listen to, their music sounds good. No one is denying that. It sounds good. It's pleasing to the ear. The beat drops. The lyrics make sense. You may even identify with the lyrics, but the problem is that even if you identify with the lyrics, it doesn't matter. Like, like, okay, let's say this. Let's say you identify with the lyrics of a song um, that talk about it. Uh, anxiety or depression or how someone feels over like a a loved one that they lost or or a, a significant other that left them let's say you identify with those feelings that the artist is feeling but if you as yourself identify with Christ and what the Lord says about you then you can't identify completely and fully with that artist with that artist's feelings there has to be a very significant disconnect between the world and the children of God. Because we are called to identify with the word of God, not with the words of these people that are struggling with the same things as you are. Sometimes we put these celebrities and these musical artists on a pedestal, like they are just as depressed and anxious and sad and lonely as the rest of the world. So you have to be careful who you listen to and what what spirit is behind those lyrics that they create. You know what I mean? Secular music is not all fun and games and good beats and and satisfying lyrics and whatever. Like secular music has some real spiritual forces behind it and you have to be careful with the stuff that you let yourself let your let into your ears. Um, in my youth group we always talked about your eye gate and your ear gate. They're the most important things to your soul and to your inner spirit. So what you put into your ears um, becomes who you are. There's a verse in the Bible that says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. And whatever you meditate, whatever you put into your ears, and your ears are connected to your brain. When you hear something, it isn't just processed in your ears, it's processed in the temporal lobes of your brain, which are on this side of your head. So what you put into your ears goes into your brain, and your brain is where you do your thinking. So as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So take the lyrics of the songs that you listen to, and you put that into your um, your brain. Imagine those lyrics become your thoughts, and those thoughts become you. Do you want to become the lyrics of the songs that you listen to? 
That's a really good question to ask. Because I, I'm telling you, I've fallen, um, I've fallen into this trap where I just feel like, oh, well, this music is so good. Like, I just identify with this artist. Like, this is so relatable. But at the end of the day, I'm still depressed after listening to them. I'm not uplifted. I'm not closer to the Lord. And a lot of people say, well, oh, secular music is not bad. Like, it's just, it's not bad, but it's not good. I've also heard this saying that says, if you're not growing, you're dying. If a plant isn't growing, then it's dying. And it's the same with secular music. It may not be good, and it may not be bad, but it's not edifying, therefore it is useless to your life. Those are some of the reasons off the top of my head that you should stop listening to secular music. You have to think, of, like, do you want to become the lyrics that you're listening to? You have to think, like, does this artist even love God? And if, if this artist doesn't love God, then why am I listening to what he or she has to say? You have to think, do these lyrics directly clash with the commandments of God? If the Lord tells me not to lust after a woman, am I listening to lyrics that are making me meditate on lusting after women you have to be intentional intentionality is the key to consistency and consistency brings results are you being intentional with what you listen to with what you watch with what you hear with what you allow your children to hear there's so much intentionality in music and there's so much behind music that you should be very very picky about what's in your playlist that's basically what i had to say for reasons to stop listening to it um and now i am finally going to get into how you can stop listening to it and different ways that you can try doing this my number one way is if this is something that you're struggling with if you've been saved for a while and you're really struggling with it or you struggle with it in the past you're struggling with it again you've always struggled with it whatever stop listening to music this honestly sounds awful to someone who really loves it but i'm telling you right now the bible says that if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off if your eye causes you to sin pluck it out if your spotify or your apple music is causing you to sin is causing you to grieve the holy spirit that lives inside of you cut it off delete it doesn't have to be forever doesn't have to be until you die but it needs to be for a season. Maybe you need a week. Maybe you need a month. Maybe you need a whole year. And you know what? If you um, need to listen to something, let's say you have a long drive to work, it's going to be so boring. One, you can pray instead of listening to music, which I know might sound like mind boggling, but hey, like the Lord wants to be close to you. So you can pray in that time that you would listen to music. Or my favorite thing is you can replace your music with podcasts. Replace your music with podcasts. Listen to the word of God. Listen to people that edify the Lord. And you know what? God had created music. He made it beautiful. But if it's causing you to sin right now, or if it's causing you to feel distance from God, or if you feel conviction from the music that you listen to, then cut it out and replace it with good things. Cut it out and replace it with the word of the Lord, with an encouraging word from the Lord. Don't replace it with some junk podcast either. Don't listen to no like foolish people. I'm dead serious because there's lots of podcasts out there that will uh, uh, speak crap into your ears. Replace it with some good Holy Ghost people that are going to encourage you in the spirit and burn out the desire for worldly music in your ears. And I've made a couple videos with podcast recommendations in the past. I'll either put them in the cards or I'll link them down below. Or you can just look at my um, faith-related playlist, and they should be in there. My next tip is the way that I started listening to Christian music is to just do a one-week challenge. Do a one-month challenge of only Christian music. See how you feel at the end of it. Compare it to how you usually feel. See if you feel more uplifted, more uh, close to the Lord. See if you feel more encouraged. That's a really, really great way for you to get close to the Lord and kind of see like how it is to be without those artists and i'm telling you the longer you go without listening to secular music the uh easier it will be to let go of it another thing that you can do is replace your favorite music with the christian version of it now i know this is technically kind of wrong to say because like no christian artist should be trying to be a version of a worldly artist but let's just be honest if you like Frank Ocean, or you like Drake, or you like X artist, not 
X, X, Tentacion, but just X, Y, Z artist, you know what I mean. <laughs> but if you like a certain artist, then you will most likely find an artist in a similar genre or that has the same kind of flow or a similar flow in the Christian world. And that's just how it is. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying that one Christian artist is going to exactly mimic your favorite worldly artist. But if you like a certain sound or a certain genre, then it's there in a way that glorifies God. I'm telling you, be intentional and search for it. Look it up. Also, I have plenty of videos with my music recommendations and I'm going to keep making those in the, in the future. So you can look forward to those as well. Another tip is to look up the lyrics of the songs that you're listening to. Sometimes it's easy to just put stuff into your ears and just like, you know what I'm saying? But if you like really are having trouble, look up what you're listening to, read the lyrics, like just read them out loud or read them to yourself and think like, do I really want to be putting this in my ears? Like without the music behind it, without a beat, without the artist, are those lyrics something that you really want to be in your heart that you want to become? Another tip is to just delete the playlist. So I'm going to be super honest here and say that Probably like a year ago, I had a playlist of all non-Christian songs. Like there were probably only like 10 songs on there, but they were non-Christian songs that I loved. Like I loved and they really weren't that bad. They didn't really have that much cursing, but I just found that every time I clicked on that playlist, I just felt like convicted and I felt like it was it had to be done in secret like it had to be done like in private or when I was driving home at night and it wasn't that the music was so horrible or so bad or saying like the worst things in the world but it was just that I knew that I was better than listening to the artists that I listened to before I got saved you know what I mean and I understand like everything in moderation like sometimes you just want to listen to a song and it's a good song you know what I mean but it really shouldn't be a part of your day like you shouldn't have a playlist of that you know what I mean because that's like your daily like go to it and click on it but if you're really feeling a song then you could go find it if you want to but I felt so convicted and I ended up just deleting the playlist altogether just because I don't want that to be a part of my life you know I don't want it to be a part of me you know it's okay to hear it every now and then but do I really want this playlist at my disposal all the time? Because if I'm being honest, I probably would click to listen to that more often than my other ones. And then my last tip for this video is to get around people that also listen to Christian music. Um, I know that it can be difficult for me. It was in high school. I would get made fun of a lot. Um, I remember, I don't know if you guys remember the song, I, I Love God by Eric Eric <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember the song I Love God by Erica Campbell. It was literally spelled L-U-H instead of love. And I remember one day I was in, I was, this was in high school, probably like my freshman or sophomore year. And one of my friends, she like called over a bunch of people that we like all knew. And she was like, yo, 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 guys, this is the music that Emily be listening to. And she played that song. And I was so embarrassed. Like I was literally like mortified. Like, this is not even the kind of music I've listened to. Like, this is just one song. Like, da da da. Like, I was so upset. Like, I didn't show it that much, but deep down, I was so upset and I was so embarrassed. And, and I think everyone has experiences like that. Or even like when you're listening to Christian music and you're like, this is awful. <laughs> this is how I feel when I'm going through my rap playlist sometimes. Like, this is just not good rap music. Like, I just want some good rap music. You know what I mean? But like, honestly, you can't let moments like that take you over or take over your thoughts about Christian music, number one. And number two, if I wasn't hanging out around those people, then I would never have suffered that embarrassment. I made some pretty poor choices when it came to friends in high school. So I'm just saying, get around people that also listen to the same music as you because it'll be really encouraging instead of discouraging. Um, because they'll share in, the, in your same music taste, they'll share in your um, want to honor God and to love God even with what you listen to. And yeah, I think that's, that's probably one of the most important things. The Bible says, walk with the wise and become wise, but a companion of fools is destroyed. So walk with the wise and become wise. You will not be tempted to listen to secular music if everyone around you is listening to Christian music and listening to music that glorifies God. Um, so it's really important to watch who you hang out around and who you hang out with. 
All right, guys, so I really hope that this video was helpful. I was a little bit nervous to make it just because I know people have differing opinions, but so many of you have commented on some of my other videos saying, um, I really love this playlist. I'm so happy. Like I was just looking for some new Christian music or I was having so much trouble stopping listening to this other music. So I really want to be able to help you guys in a super practical way. And it's also a little bit more personal in this video more than I usually am. So I just hope that it helps you. Um, I hope that uh, you know that you can do it. It's not like this huge thing and it might not happen all at once. It may come in waves. It may take some time. But it's, it's a really good thing to do to your life if you are trying to grow with God. I think music is the number one thing. It has to be close to number one. <laughs> Maybe number three. I don't know. But it's up there. So I hope this video was really helpful to you guys. And I hope that you can use it in your personal life. Make sure to comment and let me know if any of this was helpful. Because I love your feedback. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to say for today's video. I love you all so much. But God loves you more. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.